Now we're going to talk about the coil. Um, got to mention this. This is the coil right here. And it is usually very, very fragile. This one happens to be in extraordinarily good shape. But it's a bunch of thin wires uh, that's wrapped around this piece of metal. And it is apparently held in place by paper. And this paper deteriorates over time starts to fall apart. So this one is in, is in good shape. Like I said, yours might not be. Now, um, the old cords usually uh, are unsafe, they're cracked, rotten. If they're not, then you can use them again. I see a lot of them that, that are. So I always take off the old cords and put a new one on. Um, what I do is I take off the old ones uh, using a soldering gun, and then I cut new wire it's a lamp wire 18 2 that you can buy at Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, and they sell that in white, black, and brown. So I'll take off uh, the old wire, solder on my new lamp cord. Um, but uh, this, there are other options if you don't have a soldering gun or um, you know, soldering iron or whatever, and you don't want to do that. So some of the other options to make it safe is you can completely remove the insulation from uh, the leads here that go to the terminals and get heat shrink tube and just slip that over uh, the old wire, leaving some exposed. So you can uh, take your new cord and attach it. And you can use butt connectors, that kind of connector where you put one wire on one side, one wire on the other side, and you crimp it. Uh, you can even use, uh, you know, wire nuts. Okay, if you do either of those things, though, I recommend you use electrical tape on those connections for safety reasons. So, um, the ideal, though, is to, you know, take the, the old ones off completely. And so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to take my soldering gun, and I'm going to start with this one. And... The thing about this, I'm not good at soldering. Um, so, but this for this purpose, I don't think a person needs to be good at soldering. It requires very little skill with this application. Um, what I'm doing right now is just heating up the old solder till it liquefies, and then um, the old wire will just slip right off. And there should be a hole in this terminal. And what I'm going to do is, is heat up the uh, old solder to make sure I can get a hole in there for my new wire. So, uh, actually, what I'm going to do is flip this around to do the other one because it was put in the opposite way. Uh, this is a hobby vise. You can get them at Harbor Freight and get them on uh, eBay really cheap. And it um, be handy to hold things in place while you're working on them. So now I'm just going to go to this next one here, take my soldering gun, put this on there. Um, that'll make the old solder molten, and then the old uh, wire will just come off. So instead of immediately soldering on uh, the new wire, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to do something called wrap the coil. And wrapping the coil is uh it's not necessary to do on every coil especially a coil like this which is in such good condition okay but i do it anyway uh now what i mean by wrapping the coil is there's this stuff and it's called glass tape and i'm not sure if anybody else makes it besides scotch but i got this off of amazon and um what we can do is we can wrap the coil here old paper um, with this glass tape and the word on the street is this glass tape is fireproof so that's an extra precaution uh, that we can take to make sure we don't have any problems down the road so what I do is I've got to get around the terminals here so um, I'd, I'd start by just taking a piece and uh, pulling it out about I don't know four and a half five inches long and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down on it about a half an inch in or so and just put a slit. And then I'm going to take it and 
I'm going to put the tape on there and have that slit line up with the terminal, just like that. And bring it all the way to the edge of the coil. I also, and I want to mention this, is I, I jot down whatever number's on there. I don't know what the numbers mean. I don't know if they're helpful to anybody uh, down the road, but I actually do put them uh, those numbers back on the coil when I'm done. They're usually a certain color and a certain number. Maybe that'll mean something to somebody down the road. In any case, um, a pair of tweezers is helpful. Uh, I pull this through and wrap it like this along the edge and then just cut off any extra what I have. Um, by the way, this glass tape, it's not cheap, but uh, its I've done a lot of coils with it and uh, still have a bunch of it left. So um, I like doing it. Like I say, it's, it's not something you have to do. It can be helpful if your coil is, you know, falling apart uh, to hold everything in place to ensure that it, it doesn't fall apart on you and stop working. Now I'm just simply going to do the other side here um, in the same way, and then I'm going to come back and do the middle. So um, there's also another product that I'm going to use. Um, when I'm done with this and that other product is called liquid tape and uh, liquid tape I'm sorry yeah liquid tape it's uh, something that's used to insulate uh, electric uh, components uh, you brush it on it dries it dries very quickly um, and it provides that insulated barrier and what I'm gonna do um, when I'm done wrapping this is I'm gonna coat this glass tape this white glass tape with the liquid tape and um, that's gonna make the coil up here somewhat like it did originally because when you put this glass tape on here it's obvious that it's you know not not the way that it uh, came so now for the middle here I'll typically cut like uh, two ends like that just so I can get it between the two terminals without having a, a pocket. So put it on there. Say tweezers are very helpful. All right. So now I've got the thing wrapped, I'm ready to coat it with the liquid tape. And there you go. Uh, the liquid tape, uh, you can buy it at Walmart, you can buy it at Harbor Freight. Looks like this. Um, it's it's not like a lot of fun to, to put on. You paint it on there, but it's it's just so thick um, that you um, usually have to go over it more than once. What, what I do is I just uh, put this on and give it a coat and then go back over it once it's dried a little bit. And my goal is just to cover all the white so when you look at the coil, uh, you don't see any of the white glass tape. But this is another layer of protection um, for the coil and you know something is if you can't get the glass tape um, and you have a uh, coil you can get this liquid tape and that's better than nothing especially if your coil the paper is all rotted and falling off anyway so um, I'm gonna get this on there and, um, and I'm gonna come back um, talk about the rotor and finish up the coil.